So, if you don't know it, please ask questions. Let's use some more examples. Because the practical example of this is really what matters. The starting point is converting decimal to binary and binary to decimal, just so you understand how it works. And in order to be able to determine how many networks you need and then assign IP addresses, you need all that practical, um, all those practical examples. So let's start over. I have, I have a school system that has, and, and let's say it is PHS, and PHS has 37 different buildings. And each one of those buildings has about the most number I have in each building of computers or devices is 450 computers or hosts. Okay? If I write that down so you can remember. <coughs> What I want you to do, let's back up. What are the three, we're going to use private IP addresses, which have been reserved for use in this kind of scenario. So we're only going to use private IP addresses. What are the, give me the ranges of private IP addresses that have been identified by the IANA for your use, which are not routable, by the way, in the public internet. Give me one, Q. Keep going. 172.16.0.0 with a subnet mask of 16 bits, which means what is the subnet mask? Jessica? 255.255.0.0. So this network address is reserved for private I or for private IP addresses. So that is behind a firewall, not on the internet. Give me another one. Yes? 10.40.0.0. 10 10.0.0.0. What kind of subnet mask? 255.0.0.0. So what would the number here be? 8. 8. Means the subnet mask is 255.0.0.0. And there is a third class of IP addresses that are reserved for private use. Quinn. 192.168.0.0. 0. 0. But it's got a subnet mask of what? How many bits? 16. How many? 16. Not 16. Even though you can use a yes. 24. 24. Okay. So, given. These are the private IP address ranges. I want you to use these. I have a school system with 37 different buildings, 450 different computers. We're going to talk through it, and then you're actually going to use uh, uh, submit a problem. The remote users will do the same. You'll submit the problem via email to me. Four points. This is part of your grade. Okay. So your job, let, let's talk through this first. What's the first step in all of this? You have entire capability, you can do it all yourself. Give me the first step in your decision making. Zach, what's the first step? Okay, so how many different networks do I have? Zach? No, 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 how many different network, networks do I have? I have 37 different networks, that's the key point. So given the fact that I have 37 different networks, which of these ranges of IP addresses can I use? <coughs> given the fact that I have 37 different networks, which of these ranges of IP addresses can I use for the networking side? Yes. Huh? I 
I only have 37 different networks. Every one of them has to be a different network address. Zach. 192. Would that work? 192. I've got 24 bit networks or a subnet mask. You tell me. How do I calculate the possible number of networks with 192.168? How do I calculate the possible networks? Yes? Why would it be 2 to the 16th if I've got a subnet mass of 24? 2 to the 24th power minus 2. So how many different networks does that work out to? Bunches. Like millions, right? If you actually did the math. Alright, so given 37 networks, 192 would work. Okay, what else? Would, would these two work also? Yes. Based on networks, absolutely. Which of these top two are going to give me more host addresses? Zach? Uh, ten. ten, because I've got only eight is allocated, eight bits is allocated for network addresses, and I've got 24 bits allocated for host addresses. So the formula to calculate possible number of, of host addresses is 2 to the 24th minus 2. The network IP address is 2 to the what power minus 2. If I wanted to calculate the possible number of network addresses, Austin, 2 to the 8th power minus 2, which is still more than 37. So all three of these would work for network addresses. Given the fact that I have 450 computers in the largest network, one of these is actually 450, has 450 different hosts, one of these networks. Which of these will work? Which of these possible network addresses will work? Michael. 16 bit would work. How do you know that? Both network and host, right? That's plenty. What about this one? That's for networks. Oh, I'm sorry, no, you're right. You're right. Two to the eighth power. Actually, for hosts, I have how many? Two to the 24th power minus two. So that's what we're trying to figure out. Do I have enough? And I have millions for that. What about this one? Do I have enough host addresses with a 24-bit subnet mask? What is the formula I use, uh, Austin? No, no, I just need to For host addresses? <coughs> if my subnet mask is 255, dot two five five dot two five five dot zero I can only use this part the last octet for host addresses so two to the eighth power minus two does two to the eighth power minus two give me enough host addresses what is the result of two to the eighth power minus two Brittany What is the result? Austin Howell? 254. 2 to the 8th power minus 2, what'd you say? 254. 254, is that enough? It is not, because I have 450 computers. So my network addresses cannot start, if I'm using a 24 bit subnet mask, cannot start with 192.168. We've eliminated that one. I have too many hosts for each one of those networks. So I've got these two choices. Either one would work. All right, so now what's the next step? I know which range of IP addresses. So if, since both of those will work, let's use 172.16.0.0 as my base. Give me a valid IP address for the high school or a valid network address for the high school. Quentin. We're using 172.16, Q. I just established that. I want a network address, I asked for. You just gave me an IP address for a host. Give me a valid IP, uh, network address, 172.16. Okay, so 
just the network address, 172.16.0.0. Okay, give me another network address for the, uh, for Webster. Michael Lieber. No. Nope. Well, it could be, but 172. What? Nope, that's the same network. Yes. 172.17.0.0. Give me another one, Zach. And this is going to be for Riverside. All right, 172.18.0.0. Okay. All of these are valid network addresses. Okay? Give me a router IP address. Give me the, configure the router between Webster and Riverside. Network address at Webster is 172.17.0.0. Network address at Riverside is 172.18.0.0. The subnet mass is 255.255.0.0. Austin Howell. What was the uh, question? Configure this router. With the uh, IP address 172.18? For the network address? Webster is 172.17, Riverside is 172.18. Give me an IP address for these router or for this router. Who knows the answer? Yes. Where? Where? Okay, so 172. Dot, what'd you say? Okay, so that's on the Webster network. 172.17.0.1. What about the other interface on the router? Uh, help me out, your name. Larry. Cool. Say again? Larry. Larry, what is it? Larry Ringel. 172.18.0.1. Okay, 172.18.0.1. That's on that same network, so that's the router. Okay? Because everything at Riverside has to be able to see this interface. Everything at Webster has to be able to see this interface. Okay? Now, configure, if this is the router 172.17.0.1, now what I want you to do is give me exactly what you need on any other host on that Webster network. Or on the Webster network, give me a valid IP address for a printer on the Webster network. Give me everything that you would configure up here. Give me the IP address. Yes? So 172.17.0.3. Okay. And then our subnet mask would be 255.255.0.0 with our gateway being 17. 2.17.0.1. Right? Gateway is this router interface. Everybody understand that? Johnny, give me a printer that's located at Riverside. Yes. <laughs> all right. So if, you know, if I'm summarizing this all up, okay. 
each of these different places, so we get the high school web server side, okay, and they all share the same <coughs> network, they share the same network address, okay? And then because the network address is only uh, 172 dot, uh, just 172. So anything, so uh, each school or whatever will just get a, a dot 15, 14, 13, et cetera, like going down. So they just have to. Hold that thought. I'm going to ask it after class. I'm going to let everybody else go. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Listen to me very carefully. The test on Thursday is going to be postponed again. However, you will have homework for tonight that you have to turn in via email to me. It will consist of a problem like this. So check the assignments tonight. It's not going to happen today. It's going to happen tonight. And then that will be due on Thursday. All right? Understand? Read this material. Okay. I gotta have your sign. Turn that.